there are a few questions every digital artist has asked themselves at least once in these last few years. Photoshop versus Affinity Photo. Is one better than the other? Which one should I be using? And can I really make the switch after years of using Photoshop? That's the big one. So we have some questions that need answering. But no matter what your preferred software is, Envato Elements has you covered. Graphics, photos, and fonts. Plenty of cross-compatible resources, all with super simple commercial licensing. And a no-lock-in contract means you can cancel anytime. Subscribe now with the link down in the description. So what is Affinity Photo? Serif's Affinity Photo is arguably one of the first photo editing software that was really able to go you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Photoshop. They came out the gate with some pretty lofty claims we're going to do just as much, but be even more accessible and much, much more affordable. So let's take a closer look at Affinity Photo as a whole, starting with the ever so important price. Affinity Photo, as of today, will run you a one-time, that's right, one-time payment of 50 USD at full price. I do want to mention that they sometimes have 50% off sales, bringing that price down to $25. It's available on both Mac and Windows, sorry to any Linux users, you've been left out once again. And Affinity Photo does have a fully functional iPad app. You have to buy it separately, but it's a one-time payment and is also known to go on sale. If you're wondering if Affinity Photo is right for you, it probably is as far as target audience goes. Well, I tend to think Affinity Photo is really ideal for hobbyists and beginners, Thanks to that aggressively low pricing, you're really not going to find a better option in that price bracket. It's marketed towards professionals and freelancers just as much. It's a photo editing app, so photographers, digital painters, and creative compositors, which is what I do, will all find most, if not all, of the fundamental tools they need. This includes basics like uh, layer masks, adjustment layers, and a really impressive brush engine, along with uh, more advanced features like the equivalent of Blend If and um, Smart Filters. Now, Affinity Photo is by no means a Photoshop clone, not an exact clone at least. It definitely has some features that are unique to it. Personas are its most notable difference. Personas are dedicated spaces for doing specific tasks. Your default space is the photo persona, where you'll find most of your tools. Then you have a persona for liquefying, developing, tone mapping, and then exporting. Photoshop does something similar with you know, some of its filters opening up in dedicated windows, but I noticed they added something even more similar in a recent update to Adobe Premiere Pro, where exporting uh, basically has its own persona now. It also has some unique creature comforts like a built-in frequency separation filter, very nice. And one of my favorite things about Affinity Photo is how you can save an image's undo states to that AP file. You'll also notice how brushes in Affinity Photo have options uh, to have multiple different pin nibs or stamps, making things like splatter brushes uh, just much more effective. And you can also create fully colored brushes, which is very nice. These may seem small, but it's little things like that where it's like, how hasn't Photoshop done this yet? Uh, Affinity Photo definitely took some inspiration from Photoshop, so maybe now it's time to return the favor. But let's put Affinity Photo and Photoshop head to head and see if one of them comes out on top. Both Affinity Photo and Photoshop will cover all of your standard file types, including RAW, TIFF, and PDF, of course PNG and JPEG. And Affinity Photo can open several Adobe file types, so PSDs, PSBs, and AI files. In fact, since I don't use Adobe Illustrator, I open all my AI files in Affinity Photo if I need to. We'll touch on how well Affinity Photo converts those PSDs to AP files in a moment, but for supported file types, I'm going to call it a draw. Photoshop has been around since the 90s and has been the industry standard for just as long. It has millions of resources ranging from free to premium. You can easily find brushes, add-ons, actions, and plugins already made for you, a handcrafted by professionals on sites like Envato Elements. So much so that unless it's for something really specific, there's almost no point in making your own brush or pattern. Now, Affinity Photo has a lot of great default resources, particularly uh, default brushes. It can also use .abr files, which is the same brush file format that Photoshop uses. However, brushes with dynamic settings won't convert perfectly, uh, but stamp brushes will cross over absolutely fine. Affinity Photo uses standard font files, so your whole font library is just there waiting for you. However, that does not include fonts from the Adobe Fonts Library that comes with an Adobe subscription if you happen to have one, though I think that's reasonable. But neither will graphic templates that rely heavily on uh, layer effects and smart objects, uh, like a lot of pre-made text effects do. So even with a vast selection of fonts, image-based textures and resources, and a respectable amount of pre-made brushes, Affinity Photo will still have to take the loss here. 
a Photoshop definitely wins resource availability. Now, when it comes to a cross compatibility, this is gonna be an easy one because Photoshop doesn't have any. If it's not a standard file or a file format that Adobe literally invented, uh, then Photoshop is gonna touch it. Doesn't care that it exists. Affinity Photo has a very impressive cross compatibility with Photoshop on the other hand. I mentioned earlier that it can open PSDs and PSBs and you can install .avr brushes. However, there are limitations to how well these things are gonna cross over. It's not gonna be perfect, every time at least. Like I said, many Photoshop brushes lose their dynamic settings when installed in Affinity Photo, and when a PSD or PSB is opened in Affinity Photo, all smart objects will be rasterized every time. That's because the way Affinity Photo handles smart objects fundamentally differs from Photoshop. Some shapes may be rasterized, but many will be converted into a vector shape with a edible uh, path. Affinity Photo will have partial support for any applied layer effects with most remaining intact, and the same thing will happen with layer modes. Color lookup adjustment layers, which I use uh, quite a bit, uh, do not seem to cross over to Affinity Photo. This is a pretty large PSD here, and when opened in Affinity Photo, the only thing that didn't work were those lookup adjustments that did some minor color grading. The smart objects were all rasterized, but all in all, this converted really well. For comparison, here's an image with a much more intense color grade using color lookup layers, and it didn't fare nearly as well. You can use LUTs in Affinity Photo, do you want to make that clear? They just have to be reapplied if you're opening a PSD specifically. So Affinity Photo definitely wins on cross-compatibility, because Photoshop isn't going to play nice with anyone who isn't Photoshop. Let's cover some quick fire pros and cons uh, for both programs, starting with Affinity Photo. Pros, you can't beat its one-time affordable price, which includes free updates. It's honestly a steal. Now, Affinity Photo was built to be much more user-friendly, significantly lowering the learning curve for beginners. The live filters and previews go a long way towards lowering that learning curve. Everything in Affinity Photo shows you what's being applied as you apply it. This includes some dynamic controls where you could adjust the setting by clicking and dragging on the image itself. And Affinity Photo just kind of has better brushes thanks to being able to add those multiple brush tips to one brush. Brushes are also just easier to create and can include colored pixels. And not to mention, I have to give another shout out to their very impressive default brush library. Now for the cons, because there definitely are some cons. First, performance issues when dealing with larger files in particular. I've had people both agree and disagree with me on this one, but I find the performance of Affinity Photo 2 uh, be not only laggier, but also more prone to crashes, especially when dealing with larger, more complex files which is what I pretty much exclusively work with. And two, uh, it can be a hard switch if you're already a heavy Photoshop user. This one will change from person to person, but I think new users will have a much easier time taking up Affinity Photo compared to long time Photoshop users. It can be tough to teach an old dog new tricks, what can I say? Now it's a Photoshop's turn. The pros, Photoshop is still the industry standard and what most people use. Uh, suppose you have to do a lot of collaboration, a Photoshop PSD is what's going to be expected of you. Or if a lot of resources are being shared on a team, most will be made with only Photoshop in mind. Uh, bringing us to the fact that Photoshop has an unbeatable library of resources. That includes learning resources like tutorials and courses. Uh, two, thanks to Adobe Sensei, uh, Photoshop's auto selection tools are second to none, in my opinion. Adobe is heavily invested in its AI, so I can only assume its auto selection tools will only continue to improve. And finally, Photoshop has more tools, filters, and options. Uh, this can be a con for some, but for others, those advanced tools are heavily integrated into their workflow. And now for the Photoshop cons. And we're going to start off with the obvious, that expensive monthly subscription. It's the main issue people have with all Adobe products, and partially why I think Affinity Photo has a, such a die-hard fan base. I can still hear the echoes of outrage from when uh, Photoshop announced the subscription model all those years ago. And a high learning curve with what many consider to be a bloated interface. Even as someone who uses a lot of more, you know, advanced filters and settings, there is a lot of bloat here. Mainly as a result of being around for so long. It doesn't matter how outdated a filter may be, there's going to be a group of people who will be very mad if that random esoteric filter disappears. So the final question, 
is Affinity Photo right for you? If you're a beginner or a hobbyist, I say absolutely, no questions asked. But if you're a freelancer or professional who already uses Photoshop, it's honestly just going to kind of depend. If you do a lot of collaboration or passing back and forth of Photoshop-specific resources, then no, I don't think the cross-compatibility is just strong enough yet. If you're on a budget or looking to cut costs, then the price of Affinity Photo is unbeatable, and at the very least, it won't hurt to give it a try. Suppose you're a longtime Photoshop user, but you only use basic settings, filters, and tools like brushes, adjustment layers, layer modes, and layer masks. In that case, again, it's absolutely worth trying Affinity Photo. Well, there's not much to lose, especially if you grab it on sale. As for me, I've been digging in that Adobe Trench for almost 15 years now. It's too late for me, I'm much too far gone. But you know what? I get the best of both worlds because you can find both Photoshop and Affinity tutorials from me, Abby Esparza, right here on the Envato Touch Plus channel. If you like this video, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, both Photoshop and Affinity Photo related. Happy designing. See you next time.